Hey everyone, so before this vlog begins, I do want to give you guys a heads up that there are some voiceovers in this uh, vlog. That is because the convention halls were very loud during the convention, and so when I was editing these clips and putting them together, uh, you couldn't really hear me. So instead, I try as best I can to repeat what I say in the video clips in a voiceover. So without any further delay, enjoy my Brick Rodeo 2021 vlog. Hey guys, so I actually came back from the convention and I brought home a few things uh, from when I registered. So I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys the goodie bag and also this door prize. So when I registered at the front desk, they came out with a box with a bunch of little slips, uh, paper slips that had numbers on them. So I just drew one uh, without looking and I drew the number 139. And this set corresponded with that number, so this is the set that I won. It is the LEGO City Rover Testing Drive set, and it's actually inspired off the NASA test rovers, as you can see on the bottom left corner. And so this is actually a really cool set, and then on the side it actually has the number. So yeah, I drew number 139, and so this set corresponded with that number. And so I'm not going to build this, even though it is a cool set. I want to keep it sealed and save it as a memento as my first time displaying at Brick Rodeo with an all-access membership pass. But this is actually a really cool set. I believe it came out in 2019, so I think it's retired by now. So that's also pretty cool. So here is the Brick Rodeo goodie bag that I received when I registered at the convention. It says Brick Rodeo 2021, a 10th Brick Odyssey. Now, I didn't realize this till like a few minutes ago, but this year's Brick Rodeo is inspired or based off the the movie uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey and so that movie is the theme for this year's Brick Rodeo and so this scene right here is actually the first scene in the movie. This is where the alien monolith which is this structure comes down to earth amongst a tribe of or a pack of apes and they learn from the monolith that the bone that this ape is holding can be used as a weapon to fight off the other uh, apes. And so that's actually a really cool scene from the movie and it's honestly really funny that that's this year's Brick Rodeo because that is one of my favorite science fiction films. And so I really like the art on this all access membership Brick Rodeo bag. So here is everything that came inside the Brick Rodeo all access membership goodie bag. To start off, these two bags are for like mini builds and the instructions are online at BrickRodeo.com for all access members. This bag right here is to build like a little longhorn, which is kind of funny. And then this bag right here is to make some little uh, minifigure habitat. And so here's actually my badge. It says my name and it's all access member. And here's the Beyond the Brick lanyard. So Beyond the Brick will be there at the convention. So hopefully I get interviewed by them. Then also I also purchase a companion member so that one person can be with me throughout all four days of the convention. So definitely invite some of my family and some of my personal friends as well if they want to come. So here's another mini build. This is to make like the monolith on the moon with the astronaut uh, from 2001 A Space Odyssey. So that's actually very cool as well. Then here's my brick badge. It says Comic Bricks, Brick Rodeo, 2021, a 10th Brick Odyssey, recognized a full networking event, and Brick Rodeo 2021. So hopefully as I go, go to more of these LEGO conventions like Brick World Chicago or Brick Fair Virginia, I can have like this long badge to show how many conventions that I've uh, been to or that I attended. Also inside this goodie bag came with this cloth piece to dust your mock. So that's actually very funny and also very nice of them as well to include that. And also says SL Texas to represent uh, Sugarland, Texas. Then here is a Sugarland Marriott Hotel pen uh, because the convention is taking place at the Sugarland Marriott Hotel at Sugarland uh, Town Square. So this big bag contains a lot of just random pieces. This is supposed to be used for the activities they have throughout all four days of the convention for all access members. For example, like uh, speed build challenges or one handed build challenges. And also, this just comes with very cool parts and some very unique colors. So I can't wait when the convention is over to add these to my parts collection. And so now the two things that I am definitely looking forward to build inside this goodie bag are these two boxes. So this first one is a mini one. It says 2021, a 10th Brick Odyssey, limited edition, 70 sets produced, 118 pieces. And so this mock right here is actually supposed to represent the vehicle that Dave Bowman, the main character from 2001 A Space Odyssey, and his friend, who I forget the name of, they hide in this vehicle to 
so that how their uh, AI computer system on the ship doesn't hear them. And so that's actually kind of cool. It's surprising. Like, I should have known that this year was 20, or uh, this year's Brick Rodeo theme was uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey theme. That's actually very cool. And so this probably might be my favorite Brick Rodeo theme if they, like, do some other theme from a movie that I like. But for now, I think this one might just be my favorite theme. So I'm very looking forward to build this. And again, all the instructions for these two sets right here, which I'll go over this one in a minute, and then the ones with the inside the mini bags, all the instructions are available at BrickRodeo.com for all access members. And so this last one is a big red uh, box. It says it's a Fiesta Heads. It's limited edition again. 150 sets of these were produced and it has 319 pieces. And so this is the little build. Inside this red box contains the pieces to build this Fiesta Heads. And this is actually kind of cute. It says Houston on the hat and it's actually standing on uh, Texas. So that's actually kind of cool. So again, I'm very much looking forward to building these little sets that they gave All Access members. It's very nice of them and it's honestly very cool. Oh, and the last cool thing that I forgot to show y'all is this. So some of the contestants on LEGO Masters will actually be here and I actually met a few. And so right here contains all the cards for all the LEGO Masters Season 2 contestants that will be at the convention. So as you can see inside this bag, the first one is Moto and I actually got his signature. I met him earlier today and he was very cool guy, very uh, nice guy, and also uh, very fun to talk to. So I'm very much looking forward to meet a lot of them. I already met Wayne and Zach Makaseit, as well as uh, Mark and Steven Erickson. So uh, that's actually really cool. I still have, I think, two more will be there. So I still have two more to meet. But nonetheless, this is very cool of them to come to, to Sugar Land and to... Uh, display at Brick Rodeo 2021 because they did bring some mocks to display. And so this is what came in the 2021 Brick Rodeo goodie bag for All Access members. So as you can see, this is part of Starkiller. Rich Boy J and Colt of Christensen and David Hall, they all came in a U-Haul and I actually helped them unpack. I uh, gave Jay my shoe box that I had be just for all the loose pieces that came off of some of the sections here. But later on, they still have to go back to Jay's house to pick up the rest of Starkiller. But I don't think recording this does it justice. These sections alone are just really tall, and it's just amazing to finally see, like, Starkiller in person, even though it's not even fully assembled yet, and this is not even, like, 50% of the mock. So Jay actually left to go back to his house with the U-Haul to pick up what is left of Starkiller and bring it to the convention. He did assign me, Trevor04, and Caleb Briggs to see if we can help out and try and rebuild like that wall section where Ray is climbing when she escapes her prison cell. That'll go right behind the hangar section. And so he entrusted us to hopefully try and rebuild some of it and who knows, maybe all of it. So it's currently after hours and I'm helping out by trying to align the base plates uh, near the stage area and I'm just currently watching Dre trying to uh, rebuild the section or put together the stage area section with the huge first order banner. So now I'm currently building this uh, border section that'll help elevate the forest area that'll go right over there at the end of the mock. So as you all can see, progress is being made on this mock. Uh, everything else from Jay's house has been brought to the convention. So Snoke's Thorn Room was completely destroyed on the way here. I'm sure Jay will have fun trying to rebuild Snoke's Thorn Room. And then as you can see, Jay's working on that dark blue gray wall that I actually helped him with just a little bit. Colt and I actually finished the light bluish gray wall. The barracks didn't get damaged during transportation, so that is really good, and it'll go on the right side of the mock, right next to all the other rooms. The cafeteria did experience some damage while being transported, but that shouldn't be too hard to fix. 
So today is the first day of public exhibition, so I'm on my way over now to the convention. So here is my setup for the first public exhibition day. As you can see, there's like this big poster behind the tables. That was actually very last minute, but I'm glad I was able to get that before the public exhibition. So as you can see, I have my play scale bus, my large scale bus, and the binder, so I'm 100% ready to go. So I stayed till around 11 last night helping Jay and his gang assemble Starkiller. And so this is what it looks like today, this Saturday morning, the first day of public exhibition. And so Jay and his gang are definitely going to be building throughout the day, even during the public exhibition hours. So I'm just going to rock around and show you guys what Starkiller looks like at the moment. <laughs> So public exhibition is pretty much over for today and right now I'm currently helping Jay trying to rebuild these snow speeders and these snow speeders are very fragile and I'm having a hard time trying to fix them because whenever I fix them pieces break off because it's just so fragile. The snow speeders will be used to recreate that deleted scene from The Force Awakens. So here is a look at the inside of the oscillator building. It's pretty much complete. All Jay needs to do now is get the lights working. But I'm just looking at this thing. This oscillator building is actually surprisingly very tall. It's, it's even taller in person and uh, it just looks so good. I'm just admiring all the details in it. And so I also finished the two snow speeders that I was working on earlier. Uh, I'm missing pieces for one of the side engines, but Jay said that's not a big deal. This thing is massive. And this is only like part of it. There's still a ton more back there that they're still working on. But it is just, I can't stop saying massive. And those TIE Fighters are pretty heavy in person. Hopefully y'all can hear me in the convention room. The exhibition is over for today.
So this is what I'm currently doing, just filling in these gray patches with white pieces to create the snow border all around this stage area. And I'm almost done. I think that might be the last one, but I'll double check all the sides again. Yep, that area was the last one. So finish outlining the Starkiller base stage, base plates. This is the hanger. It's just a black background. You can see Ray climbing over there. This just looks awesome. The TIE Fighter, more figures. Inside here you can see all the structural support. So it's currently around midnight and Jay gave me this assignment of building one of Jarek's first order TIE Fighters. And so I'm going to go ahead and try and sort all these parts and get building. So it's currently Sunday morning before the public exhibition. I think one of these TIE Fighters on this side of the landing platform is one of the ones that I built. And I think Cult of Christensen uh, helped finish it. Uh, I didn't get to finish one of the TIE Fighters. I was so close, but I just too tired and just couldn't finish it. And I left around 2 a.m. last night, or I guess you could say this morning. So here's my setup for day two of the public exhibition. And I actually have it taken apart in sections to show people the interior in person. And then I have photos in the front to show what it looks like fully assembled. And I think this is the better way to go instead of having it fully assembled because surprisingly during the first round of a uh, public exhibition, a lot of people didn't even know that there was an interior. A lot of people didn't really notice that binder. So I think this is uh, the better way to display my bus mock. So I have the wings on top of this bucket with a towel over it. So that way um, I have room to display all the other sections. And so that way it can support the engines that are connected to the wings as well. So as you can see the convention is now over and it was time to pack up my mock. So as you can see I have the wings encased in the foam boards with tape wrapped around them again. And then I just put the main body of the plane directly on top of it onto this cart and now it's time to roll it out of the convention room. My mock came in like this and now it's time to leave with it like this. So this has been quite the journey. I had so much fun this past weekend and I can't wait for next year's Brick Rodeo. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.